Okay, we're back and, and joining us once again, if you're just uh, tuning in, we are at Seton Hill University and we're talking to some authors uh, and publishers that are at the In Your Right Mind uh, conference this week. And uh, Deanna was with us a little bit earlier. John was with us a little bit earlier. And we have uh, another of uh, the Raw Dog authors that are with us here today, uh, D. Harlan Wilson. Uh, David, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Do you have a current project you're working on you want to share with us? Uh, yeah, I have a new novel out from Raw Dog Screaming Press called The Kyoto Man, uh, which came out. There was a signed limited edition um, hardcover that came out end of last year and followed by the hardcover and paperback and all of the ebooks about a man who turns into Kyoto, the city, 10,001 times. Very interesting. <laughs> now, this is a book, a book you uh, <clears throat> published or yes, edited? Yes, it's, it's the third in a trilogy. Okay. The books have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, they're set in the same sort of uh, real world. And there's, they have a little to do with each other. But <clears throat> there, there is some linkage, but they're, they're standalone novels, yeah. Sure. Yep. Now, you teach as well as write, is that yeah, correct? I'm an English professor at Wright State University Lake Campus, which is in Salina, Ohio. Um, it's a satellite campus of the main Wright State University campus in Dayton. And I, uh, I teach some short fiction writing, but my best-selling class is business writing. Hmm. That's More what practical. everybody wants. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very exciting and compelling stuff. <laughs> so what would you classify your genre as? Uh, I think I, I w work in different sorts of genres, or at least people say that I do, and, and I call myself different things. I don't know what, for fun, I guess, to have something to call oneself as an author. Uh, a realism is one that's used probably most frequently, and I actually just gave a, a little talk on what that is, but basically in a real narratives, uh, which can combine the aesthetics of all kinds of different speculative genres, science fiction, horror, fantasy, and others. Uh, the cause and effect schemas in real <coughs> narratives are not quite what they are in the real world, or in books that attempt to uh, sort of directly represent cause and effect as it exists for us. So. Yeah, I guess a touchstone a real author, although it's a term that was retroactively applied to him, is Kafka. Kafka's Metamorphosis is probably the, the touchstone for that, yeah. So what would you say is your biggest influence in your writing? What drew you to uh, said genre? Uh, you know, as I, I was just talking about uh, when I was teaching, um, I never... Realism was a term that uh, uh, came about in the late 90s. It started to be used by the editors of a magazine called, apropos, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the Café Real. And they, which, incidentally, I should say this, um, Guide Dog Books, which is the nonfiction syndicate of Raw Dog Screaming Press that I, I am the managing, of which I am the managing editor, is putting out an anthology uh, from that magazine, which is still in existence. It's an online magazine, started in 99, so yeah, over a decade, well over a decade. At any rate, um, they, I, I never sort of thought of myself as a realist. I was just kind of, I realized, well, okay, this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I don't know who I'm supposed just, to be looking no, at. <laughs> I'm kind of looking at the camera and you, you I, just sort of if, I'm, if I'm being impolite, forgive me. Um, so, yeah, again, it, it's, it's a category, you know, we, we, we use them for, for various reasons, but I guess we have to, we have to call ourselves something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some people say I'm a genre in myself, but, uh, you know, that's just another category, right? <laughs> and that's just something people say to make me feel good, yeah. Which people? I don't, you know, those, those people. <laughs> those people, okay, okay. <laughs> that's kind of a long rambling uh, answer to your question, yeah. John, uh, what, what made you, uh, what drew you uh, to an author's work uh, like, like his? Well, you know. Um, booze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the booze is a good one. He had ride, never but. had a scotch before the first time that I met him in 2003. Not once in your whole life. That's and true. I, have you, did you even drank liquor at all, ever? No, no, no he corrupted me. And I met, <laughs> I, I saw him at, I forgot where we were, it was a hotel somewhere. And you came up and I was like, hey, 
I'm going to get a scotch. You want one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we were drank the scotch out. like he'd always drank scotch. We were hanging out the with the uh, Maniac Cop guy. Oh yeah, the guy he from was Maniac Cop who was he got yeah, drunk we were, and was playing the piano. Yeah. David, he did the same thing when I introduced him to cheese curds for the first time. Oh, right. <laughs> oh yes. And if you've never had one, you should. So we. No, we it wasn't booze. Uh, yeah. yeah, more than booze. Yes. <laughs> we now know the key to your heart, though, is cheese curds and <laughs> scotch, <laughs> yeah, which is. would make an interesting diet. Yeah, if you want to get break into publishing, that's it. That's cheese curds and scotch. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. But I think when when John and I met, if I can grab your, your the question you put to John, um, you know, we were we were interested in the same sort of avant garde uh, uh, literature and doing new things and pushing the limits of narrative, uh, and uh, you know, we just kind of fit. And uh, not only the, the writing that we liked, uh, we, we actually like each other too. Yeah. We're, we're friends even. It was, it was a good fit. Uh, he was very, very, he won't talk about how industrious he is, but he was all over the place. He's a hard worker, and that's of course very attractive to a publisher, and uh, this stuff is good. <laughs> you can back it up, so. It always helps too. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually well, write, thank that's, you. that's a bonus. Yeah, so. That normally makes a good writer, someone who can write. Right, right. I, at least that's 50% of it from what I hear. <laughs> so pipeline, what's coming down the, the pipe? Or? Uh, yeah, no, there's a few things. Uh, at the end of the year, um, I don't know when specifically, a reprint of my novel, short, very short novel, Peck and Pa and Ultraviolent Romance, is being reprinted by Raw Dog for the second edition. And next year, I have a series of biographies coming out. One on Hitler, one on Freud, and one on Frederick Douglass. And they're all about me. <laughs> and you. They're kind of, they're, they're meta-mock biographies, but it's a, a lot about the publishing industry and bodybuilding and drinking and how you bring those things together and how they work. Well, it sounds like a, a great trilogy that's coming out. <laughs> Um, I want to thank you for taking some time to sit sure, down and talk to you. us. If people are looking for your work or looking to connect with you, do you Facebook, Twitter, do you yep, do I'm, I'm on all, all those stuff? and dharlanwilson.com. Okay. So you can mm -hmm. find, they can find you at your website? Yep. And there's actually a, a website specifically for uh, the Kyoto Man, okay. thekyotoman.com. Okay. Well, thanks for being with us. We'll be back in just a few minutes with more interviews from Seton Hill University. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Sorry, but...